Hello, and thank you for listening to this presentation by the Maine School Safety Center. We will cover what is the Maine School Safety Center, why are we here, and how can we help? First, let me introduce your presenters. Bridget Gilbert is our School Emergency Management Coordinator, and I am Wendy Robichaud, the Training Coordinator at the Maine School Safety Center. Have you heard of us? The Maine School Safety Center was established in 2020 and written into law in March of 2022. We have five service areas to support school safety. Our service areas are school emergency management, behavioral threat assessment management, restorative practices, student transportation safety, and safety and security. We would like to review statute section 120A MRSA 1001 subsection 16 LD 892 to discuss some revisions and critical elements. The revisions came into effect on October 25, 2023. We are going to break down the language of the statute and then give you some resources. Here's the law. It is quite wordy and hard to read here in this format, so we have broken it down for you. Here are the four key takeaways we will focus on in this presentation. Nationally recognized practices, appropriate stakeholders, designated employee, and regularly review and refine. Each school board shall annually approve a comprehensive health and safety and emergency management plan that meets nationally recognized practices and is developed by the school unit administration working collaboratively with appropriate stakeholders. The changes are underlined. Let's discuss what each means. So what are nationally recognized practices? In 2013, the White House designated six federal agencies to come together to develop a guide to help schools with developing their comprehensive emergency operations plan. You can download this plan as well as a sample plan off from the REMS TA site, or you can go to the Maine School Safety Center's website under Emergency Management and get it there. You can make this into a usable document, keep what makes sense and pertains to your school and revise the rest, keeping the format. And for those of you who may not be familiar with REMS TA, this acronym means Readiness and Emergency Management for Schools Technical Assistant. This is a trusted site that we go to for training and technical assistance. They offer online training, in-person training, and may be beneficial when searching for specific information. The six federal agencies that were brought together to create the guide for developing high quality school emergency operations plans are the U.S. Department of Education, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, the U.S. Department of Justice, the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Along with the guide, these additional documents will assist you in following nationally recognized practices and help ensure you have the best plan possible. Let's take a better look at each document. This is the guide for developing high quality school emergency operations plans. This guide will bring you through the six step process in developing your plan. The first step is form a collaborative planning team. Step two, understand the situation. Step three, determine goals and objectives. Step four, plan development. Step five, plan preparation, review and approval. And step six, implement your plan and maintain it. This is a checklist for developing and enhancing the school emergency operations plan. It's beneficial when you have something right in front of you so you can compare notes to what you have in your plan to what you need. This EOP review checklist is more of a grading system where you can look at the information that you have and see if you have an adequate plan, if it's feasible, if it's acceptable, complete, and compliant. This is the sample school emergency operations plan that I referenced earlier. This plan is designed for you to copy the language and the outline. You're welcome to use the language as is and revise according to your school's needs, threats, and hazards. Each school will have different threats and hazards because of their demographics. Putting together an emergency operations plan is a very daunting task. It is easy to get frustrated, which is why the sample plan was created. You or your designee can learn more about putting together your emergency operations plan by attending the online school safety specialist program at the Maine School Safety Center.
The first thing a school unit needs to do before developing or revising their emergency operation plan is to make sure that all stakeholders are at the table to establish their multidisciplinary team. Here is a list of appropriate stakeholders. Be sure to include school personnel, special populations, and community partners. Here is the next change. The school board shall form a steering committee composed of school employees including a school employee designated by that employee's school as having oversight regarding school safety, school board members, parents, and others. Again, the changes are underlined. We have designed an entire program to meet this need. The School Safety Specialist Program prepares someone to support and assist administrators with the school's EOP, involve and network with appropriate stakeholders, know which questions to ask and where to find answers, act as a resource, work with the main school safety center, and the best part, it's free. Lastly, the steering committee shall regularly review and refine the comprehensive health and safety and emergency management plan. This language is not new, but is a critical element. You know that the plan must be reviewed annually, but it should also be reviewed whenever you experience or hear of real life events as well as when you gain information from exercises and drills and when there are changes in staff at the school or your community partners. If you have any questions about these changes, please contact Bridget at the email address listed here. If you have any questions about the School Safety Specialist Program or would like us to come to one of your meetings for a presentation, contact Wendy at the email address listed here.